Hey, what's going on, family? Welcome to another edition. I'm not live tonight. I wanted to do a straight video about uh, what's going on in the world, in particular, uh, some breaking news um, on Antonio Brown. Welcome to my channel. First off, GBoo2786. This is Gavin Richard Presents. Thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, so some breaking news that happened. Of course, if you guys have followed uh, the NFL uh, in recent weeks, Antonio Brown's name has come up uh, this over the weekend. Of course, this is coming from the fact that he was traded originally from the Steelers a few months ago to the Oakland Raiders where he was guaranteed at least $30 million in a signing bonus. He, um, you know, apparently over the past week, he's gotten in trouble with the Raiders. He actually went out and uh, recorded, well, didn't go out, but he recorded a conversation between he and John Gruden. There were issues. He talked about his helmet. He was considering retiring before the preseason. And long story short, Oakland Raiders uh, got fed up. He demanded that he be cut the day after he apologized to his general manager for the day earlier having a fight with the GM or alleged fight and calling him a cracker and a whole bunch of stuff so uh, a lot of people have been saying something's wrong with him he's crazy but he gets cut and immediately he gets picked up by the New England Patriots on uh, Saturday only a few hours after being cut by the Raiders excuse me and now your Antonio Brown Recently, as of this morning, as of earlier today, he has been accused of sexually assaulting a former trainer. Uh, the former trainer has filed a lawsuit, and this is a lawsuit in federal court, which I found very interesting. And she's actually a woman that served in, um, not served, but she apparently was... Antonio Brown's is, uh, it seems like, trainer, personal trainer, and she's alleging that she was sexually assaulted. Now, when you listen to the facts of the case and what she's alleging, the person's name is Brittany Taylor. Now, Brittany Taylor actually went to LSU here in Louisiana. She was a gymnast, I believe, at LSU. Uh, for several years and she eventually met uh, Antonio Brown sometime when they were in college if I'm not mistaken so this is the article that I have a friend of mine posted on heavy.com let's try and retry that I'm gonna for right now I'm gonna put on ESPN I just want to hear what Adam Scheffner has to say and I'll just listen, let you guys listen hold on The NFL begin in its process on something like this? Well, John, it is beginning its process right now because the NFL did not know about this. It was unaware of this particular situation until tonight. And so this is unfolding in front of the NFL's eyes just as it is unfolding in front of the eyes of everybody else. The NFL will have to gather as much information as it can, as quickly as it can, and try to make a decision. Now, tonight the NFL has not rendered any comment whatsoever on the Antonio Brown situation. But when you speak to people around football, they have wondered whether the NFL and Commissioner Roger Goodell could go ahead and place Antonio Brown on the commissioner exempt list, which would give everybody time to sort out some of the details of this case to figure out what did and didn't happen, and then to make a more educated decision with the benefit of time. Again, another person said, the commissioner exemplus at this point in time, it's premature to say that, but I think there are other people who think that could come into play here. We'll see how it plays out this week, depending on what the league decides. Okay. So, you just heard from Adam Scheffner. He's a top agent for ESPN's, uh, you know, I I really am not into ESPN, guys. I find that they have uh, degraded you know, they do a lot of things bad to black men. Of course, you know, I am a big football fan. Those of you who may know me, uh, I'm into sports. I'm into college football. And I guess it is a little hard when 
most of these networks, when ESPN is the leading sports network, uh, you know, Fox Sports is uh, is getting there second, and yeah, there are other ways you can watch those channels, but they have a monopoly on the sports games. So, uh, college football, boxing, um, baseball, I don't, which I don't really do, but even with uh, ABC, ABC is a con- is associated with ESPN because they're all owned by Walt Disney Company. So it's hard when you want to boycott something and they practically have control of everything and they have billions of dollars, uh, a billion dollar engine that just keeps running and running on money. Uh, but nevertheless, I looking at this and I'm reading this to you. You heard Adam Scheffner, but you can read the full complaint. Brittany Taylor, I'm going to post the link too. Brittany Taylor is a former trainer for Antonio Brown. And Antonio Brown just signed a new contract with New England on Sunday, as I stated earlier. Brown's attorneys have denied all the accusations and they say they will do everything they can to clear his name. Taylor's attorneys wrote in the lawsuit that Brown exposed himself to the 28 year old Taylor during two separate training sessions in 2017 before raping her in 2018. During the first instance which Brown, with Brown, she claims he exposed himself and kissed her without permission. A month later, Taylor said, claimed that she was at Brown's home watching TV when the all-star pro athlete started masturbating and ejaculated on her back, which he later bragged about via text messages. So wait, so we gotta stop right there, okay? When you say he ejac- how does someone ejaculate you? I- I'm not saying that this stuff again didn't happen, but ejaculating on someone's back. Were you naked? Were you clothed? That doesn't make any sense. You know, it's kind of like the Louis C.K. thing where he just jerks off in front of these women uh, at the hotel, even after he asks them for permission. <laughs> or, you know, as weird as fuck as it sounds, yeah, it can happen, but he ejaculates on you behind your back. Then on top of that, I'm listening to what she's saying. She's also alleging that this happened three different times. Now, how does something like that happen three different times in tw- when he, once he exposes himself to you? Then the second time he ejaculates on your back, and then the third and final act, you say, you were raped. Something doesn't add up with this. You know, this is kind of like the Bill Cosby case where Andrea Constan is alleging Bill Cosby, the first thing he did was pat her thigh and try to kiss her on one instance. Then the next instance was they land in the bed in a hotel room. I believe sometime even after that, uh, the alleged assault which he was tried for, which is she comes over to his house wearing uh, this midriff and he gives her three half blue tablets she takes them and supposedly she gets woozy he uh, fingers her according to her follows her breasts and then the next morning she takes a muffin from him and some tea or coffee I just believe it was some tea she drinks and eats it and goes home didn't go to the police immediately uh, didn't say anything about it. She went to a civil attorney first and foremost before she went to the police. And Troyani was the civil attorney, if I'm not mistaken. And the police, while they investigated it, they found no evidence of a crime. And the district attorney, and in that case, Blue Caster, didn't find or commission any proof of that crime. But you see what happens with this pattern, guys, now that Bill Cosby has been convicted how now the next person is Michael Jackson even though he's been dead for 10 years or Jamie Foxx he slaps a woman with his penis uh, Todd Bridges when he was 14 he kissed his 13 year old guest co-star and she didn't like it uh, it just goes on Morgan Freeman you know he flirts with younger women and looks at them and holds a, a seance session with them going up to each woman talking about how they have the power and glory and things for this shit all of that nature and that stuff actually came out last year so but getting back off track I'm sorry Antonio Brown is facing this lawsuit now what the young lady said didn't make any sense now she's a former gymnast who competed collegiately at Central Michigan University where Brown played college football and at LSU she now owns a gym where she trains young gymnasts in Tennessee. 
She stand, said in a statement, I am a rape victim of Antonio Brown. The New England paper said in a statement, we are aware of the civil lawsuit that was filed earlier today against Antonio Brown as well as the response by Antonio's representatives. We take these allegations very seriously. Under no circumstance does this organization condone sexual violence or assault. The leaks has informed us they will be investigating. We, have, we will have no further comment while that investigation takes place. Now, this is Brittany Taylor. All right, she's a beautiful girl, beautiful woman. Now, of course, unlike our courts of law, all persons that are accused of a crime have a right to due process, and they are innocent until proven guilty. In the NFL, you are guilty until the NFL says otherwise, and of course, you can still be innocent and be punished. Case in point, what happened with Ezekiel Elliott, when Ezekiel Elliott was accused of domestic violence, and the league suspended him six games, but the police department in Dallas cleared him. I, I believe it was in Dallas or Oklahoma. I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. But you don't understand. I think this happened in Oklahoma, where uh, I think Zeke is from, and he was exonerated. The police did not find any evidence that he committed a crime, and it was the recommendation of a female adjudicator by the NFL, picked by the NFL, that said the girl herself was not telling the whole story, and of course. The woman in that case was a white woman, and Ezekiel Elliott is clearly a black man. And he was suspended, nevertheless, six games for uh, by the league. And what they're talking about, the commissioner's exempt list, is basically, that you heard Adam Scheffner talk about, is basically where they will take a group of players, a group of player who allegedly has engaged in some type of illicit or immoral behavior, and obviously being detrimental to the league, the commissioner has a right to prevent them from playing. Of course, there are issues that the NFLPA, which is the uh, Players Union Association, will bring about if that occurs, uh, because Antonio has signed this contract and he's trying to get back in the league. My big problem, though, with the young lady's lawsuit is that you notice she's filed a lawsuit. There's no talk about a police complaint that she wants to file. You notice that. Why is it, even when, and i can bringing back Bill Cosby, bringing back Michael Jackson, have you noticed that when all of these accusations came out, none of them went to a district attorney. They tried to get, they went immediately to a civil a plaintiff's attorney to get money. Have you noticed that? Even in the Michael Jackson case, the Jordan, first case he had in the 90s, the Jordan Chandler incident, which Evan Chandler was his father, was the father of Jordan Chandler. The mother was June. June and Jordan had a special relationship, Jordan in particular with Michael, because June owned or worked for a limousine company that helped uh, get Michael Jackson to I believe the particular event because his limo had broken down and they connected. He met June's son, Jordan, and during that time, June and her then husband, Evan, who was a dentist, were having marital issues. They were also getting a divorce in a bad, there was obviously a bad custody battle. And since Michael was there, he wanted to get something out of Michael and Michael knew about it, and I guess cut the guy off, and that's when, oh, he molested my son. Now, you do anything to my child, or you've done anything to my family, I don't believe, I know for a fact there would not be enough money, and this is just me being real, there's not enough money in the world, I, don't, I think for any man, and in particular, but even for me, I'm talking about me, where I wouldn't kick your ass. Just if that had happened to my daughter, if it happened to my cousins, uh, you know, if I saw something like that where someone was abusing a woman, you know, whether beating them up, if I heard you raped them or did anything like that, I would not want your money. You couldn't buy my child. 
You couldn't buy my wife. You couldn't buy, you know, my sister, anything like that. And, you know, I don't know all of the facts of this case because we weren't there. She filed it in federal court. And it's important to know in Antonio has responded. Now, according to this uh, article, they're claiming that the two had stayed in touch as Brown made it to the NFL and became a star wide receiver. In approximately 2013, Ms. Taylor's senior year at LSU, Brown sent her a message on social media asking for a picture of her. She sent him a picture of her face. Brown asked for a more revealing one. Ms. Taylor refused, reminding Brown that they were just friends. They fell for approximately four years after she graduated from LSU. The two fell out of touch. In 2017, Brown reached out to Ms. Taylor via Facebook, asking her how she was doing. During this course of the renewed contact, Brown indicated he wanted Ms. Taylor's help improving flexibility, strength in his ankles, and fast twitch muscles, areas in which she had developed expertise in gymnastics. As a result, the two agreed that Ms. Taylor would provide physical training services to Brown. Now, the arrangement between them included Ms. Taylor flying to locations in Pittsburgh and Florida, where Brown had homes and where he trained. Miss Taylor believes, as far as she's concerned, the relationship was that of a brother and sister type. Uh, okay. Since that time, I don't, I'm going to post the article. I don't really want to read through the whole thing, but I'm just skimming through it. But let me get to Mr. Brown's response. Now, Taylor, I do want to point out, she lives in Memphis and trains young gymnasts at her own gym. So she just recently uh, opened a gym. She's been active in gymnastics. She's engaged. That's another thing. It says the alleged rape damaged her relationship with her fiancé. Okay. And she became engaged since May 2018. It is not clear if she has since married or the status of the relationship, but she's alleging the rape uh, hurt her relationship with her fiance. This is a folk. I'm going to upload all of the links so you guys can see it. But this is from Brown's attorneys, uh, Darren Heitner. This is his statement. Antonio Brown learned today that he's been named in a lawsuit filed in federal court in the South Dist Southern District of Florida. Mr. Brown denies each and every allegation in the lawsuit. He will pursue all legal remedies to not only clear his name, but to also protect other professional athletes against false accusations. Mr. Brown was approached by his accuser in 2017, shortly after Mr. Brown signed a contract making him the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. This is when Antonio was with the Steelers. Uh, at that time, Mr. Brown was asked to invest $1.6 million in the accuser's business project. Hmm. Ms. Br Mr. Brown was not informed by his accuser that she had just been levied with a $30,000 IRS tax lien or that $300,000 of the $1.6 million so-called investment was to be used to purchase property already owned by the accuser and her mother. When Mr. Brown refused to make the $1.6 million investment, the accuser supposedly cut off communications with Mr. Brown. However, in 2018, the accuser resurfaced and offered to travel to Pennsylvania and South Florida to train Mr. Brown for the upcoming season. Now, if you remember any other article I just read, they didn't mention the part about anything with a lien or uh, from the IRS or anything about her volunteering or, or offering her services to Antonio. Because in one article they say Antonio reaches out to her. In one article they say Antonio is the one that reached out to her. And of course she's stating that her relationship is unsustainable. 
among other things, she's claiming, obviously, uh, you know, she's basically laying out her damages in the lawsuit. So, I'm reading further. Thereafter, the accuser engaged Mr. Brown in a consensual personal relationship. Any sexual interaction with Mr. Brown was entirely consensual. The accuser not only traveled to Mr. Brown's residences on multiple occasions, she traveled from the Tennessee to Florida and returned at 2 a.m. to Mr. Brown's residence 10 days after the alleged assault. The accuser continued communications with Mr. Brown throughout 2018 and even asked for tickets to a Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Steelers football game in the winter of 2018. Mr. Brown's accuser heard, has continuously post photographs of Mr. Brown on her social media in an effort to financially benefit from his celebrity. Mr. Brown, whose hard work and dedication to his craft has allowed him to rise to the top of his profession, refuses to be the victim of what he believes to be a money grab. In May of 2018, the accuser, her, Mr. Brown's accuser, invited herself to join Mr. Brown and his friends, who were patrons, at a Miami Adult Entertainment Clubs. At Miami Adult Entertainment Clubs. So they're saying multiple entertainment clubs that they went to. After several hours of partying, Mr. Brown and his friends called it a night. Instead of leaving by herself she, as she had arrived and returning to her hotel, Mr. Brown's accuser solicited Mr. Brown to, to join her and return to Mr. Brown's residence where the two engaged in consensual, consensual sex. Again, Mr. Brown denies all of the accuser's accusation, allegations. It also reminds me, guys, since we're bringing this up, if you remember in 2003 uh, when Kobe Bryant was accused of rape by that hotel worker and what saved Kobe Bryant was that this worker actually had her clothing tested. Now, of course, under, I know in uh, the legal world, especially under the law, when you have a rape case, you can't bring up the prior sexual history of a victim. They consider it prejudicial, and of course, they think it's an embarrassment to that victim. However, what you can do is bring up their prior sexual history when it concerns identifying DNA. DNA. In other words, you can test the clothing for it. You know, they even state in the law a victim's clothing is not relevant unless it's trying to prove the uh, DNA or presence of DNA of the alleged of the alleged attack. And with Kobe Bryant, while his DNA was present, of course, they found three or four other men semen present as well which indicates she had a train run on her, okay? And, you know, another thing that's interesting, she just recently put out a couple years ago a diss album on Kobe. So you go through something so traumatic like rape or sexual assault, and yet you use this person as your platform to get money. It's the same thing even when I've ceased to degree with R. Kelly, and you saw what happened with that girl, Dream Hampton, with this documentary, Surviving R. Kelly, now they're going to have another surviving R. Kelly, the impact or the aftermath documentary since R. Kelly is in jail. You know, people have come out. They've won awards for this. I believe it's nominated for Emmys. Uh, it's a money, it, to a degree, whether they're guilty or not, you can't deny that some of the things that you're seeing is part of a money grab. Uh, whether Antonio Bryant is a rapist or not, has yet to be seen. He is innocent until proven guilty. And of course, some people may take this because of his actions uh, recently with the Oakland Raiders and how he handled that situation. And even when he did in Pittsburgh, because he basically threw a lot of people under the bus there. And so many people take him, the fact that he's an arrogant asshole, that he must be a rapist and I don't see that he might very well be uh, an asshole and of course how he handled this was very selfish I felt with the Raiders but I also believe that he's innocent until proven guilty I believe he's entitled to, and I know he's entitled to due process and there are questions that I do have 
about these accusations because even as I look through the previous article that I will post, uh, and I'm reading from heavy.com, it says that she, aside from what she had worked as student, as an assistant manager at Republic Finance in Gonzales, Louisiana, she went. She returned to athletics at as a homeschool head coach for Hongson Gymnastics. So she had, and she does have her own gymnasium. Now, if Antonio can prove that she flew out there, because I mean, and she got tickets to his game. He can prove all of that. Then it obviously looks bad for her. Now, again, what just has me doubting this is the fact that she did not go to the police. What I'm listening here and reading, she actually only person that she confided in, according to what this report is stating, she said that after the exam, after this had occurred. She sought guidance from the church after the alleged rape, and a leader there was a former ADA and sex crimes prosecutor in New York. Her attorney said the former prosecutor recognized the signs of trauma in Taylor and recommended she seek legal counsel. Didn't recommend that she go to the police. Didn't recommend that she go to the ADA. Where this occurred, she rep he's stating... According to this article, according to their lawsuit, because they're quoting it, when this former ADA recognized the signs of trauma, she seek legal counsel. Since that time, Ms. Taylor has taken a polygraph examination. It was conducted by one of the nation's leading examiners who previously led the FBI's polygraph program. Okay, that's another red flag right there. I don't know... <laughs> I do not know, and I'm sorry for laughing, but I do not know a victim of a sexual assault that goes and gets a polygraph test before a trial even starts, before a lawsuit has even been filed, didn't, and before a police report is even made. I, that, that right there sounds suspect to me. That right there doesn't seem right. And we know guys from... What we've seen with Hollywood about the casting couch, there's also something in a sports world, you know, where you have groupies, where you have women who, I mean, it's the truth is there are women who will throw themselves at these rich ballers, just like what you see on HBO when you watch the TV series, uh, you know, that I've seen where you have these girls that will send these videos to these married to these married men, these married ballers who obviously have money and they don't. And they will try to get their attention. They'll try to have sex with them, get pregnant, and in order to and they'll try and secure the bag. And it happens. Now again I'm passing off judgment on both of the individuals. I don't know all the facts of the case, but just listening to it Sounds suspect to me on Miss Taylor's end. And I think Mr. Brown may have a good chance of beating this. I don't know exactly what his evidence is. I've heard read what his attorney and what I've read to you all, what the attorney alleges that there was a consensual relationship and she had asked for money. But I don't know, uh, you know, any other factual things. He talks about text messages that can prove that or proof that he gave tickets and he's talking about her Instagram post and how she's put Mr. Brown up there. That kind of reminds me of the Lily Bernard woman who accused Bill Cosby of rape. If you go to her YouTube channel, she still has uh, her demo reel of her appearance on the Cosby show there. So you get raped by a man, you get sexual, and even by your own words, because you keep changing your story, it happened multiple times where you change the story where you said it was rape and then you said before that he grabbed you breasts so people are changing their stories consistently so that it can add up and it can get a payday that's just my opinion and I could be wrong in regards to Miss Taylor so I want to be respectful I want to hear what the facts are but 
that does sound suspicious to me. And the fact that it is filed in a district court instead of a criminal court is another thing that piques my interest that makes me think that, excuse me guys, hell all day, that this is not on the up and up. So anyway guys, I'm a little tired as you can tell. Um, we'll get continue with this. But uh, this just didn't sit well with me. So I'm glad I can talk with you all. I'm relaxed today. Excuse my appearance. I know it looks like I'm ready for bed, which I am. But I got Ali and Jack Johnson with me tonight. So uh, you guys be safe, be blessed, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.